What's up guys, how's it going? It's John, and thank you so much for tuning in and welcome back to this video. I wanna take a closer look at the new TurboGrafx-16 Mini. I just got this through Amazon the other day uh, and I ordered it a long time ago. I know, I know people have been ordering this through Amazon Japan and have gotten this much quicker. So for some reason or another, it's been delayed and many of you who've ordered this already are probably gonna be receiving it soon if you haven't done so already. But I wanna do a review on this. I'm gonna show you an unboxing, what you get with the system. Show you, of course, some of the games. The TurboGrafx-16 itself is, is one of my favorite systems. It's very over overlooked in North America, particularly. It came out in August of 1989, two weeks after the Sega Genesis hit the market, about two years before the Super Nintendo hit the market. So this primary competition when it first came out was the Nintendo Entertainment System, as well as a brand new Genesis. Though Nintendo just dominated the market with the NES, Genesis took most of the second place and there really wasn't much lever, left over for TurboGrafx. However, uh, it's cool because it was the first system to have a CD attachment, which is awesome, and there are some CD games included in this, which is great. So it's got a nice mix of games for sure. Uh, so without any further ado, let's take a closer look at some gameplay, uh, and then I'm going to share my final thoughts at the end of the video. Thanks for watching. Here's a closer look at the box, uh, kind of similar to the North American release box. However, the original North American box is obviously a little bit bigger, <laughs> quite a bit bigger, and it has the, the several people on it, right? Where one of the people I remember seeing the box when it came out, even now, and I still think that one of the guys looks like Mark Paul Gosser, who's the actor that plays Say by, uh, Zach Morris from Saved by the Bell, uh, which is kind of funny, but uh, really cool. I mean, very old school, early 80s look still to it. Even on here, it says uh, the next generation video game. Uh, and, you know, the, the, this was an underdog when it came out. You know, it was competing at the time with the NES by Nintendo. Uh, you know, Genesis was out by this time. This is kind of predates the, the Super Nintendo. This was the first system to have its own CD kind of attachment to it, the PC Engine or the TurboGrafx CD system. I've done a review on that system in the past. Uh, these are the games that come with it, 16 TurboGrafx 16 games, and the rest are uh, PC Engine games. Konami now owns the rights of these games. However, uh, they didn't back then in the day. And it's funny because it says M for Mature. The only game I can really think on here that's maybe M for Mature would be maybe Splatterhouse. Maybe one more, but most of these are really family-friendly games. So let's go ahead and open this up and, and take a look. There's a fold here. You got the instructions, which kind of look, look really old school, <laughs> which is awesome. Uh, and kind of how to hook it up, the layout, uh, what's included, you know, toggle through the software. They make it look really old school, which I love. This is how the old school manuals did it. Uh, main specifications. Looks like it's in French, and I'm, I'm assuming it's also in in Spanish later on as well. Those are mainly the three main languages that you'd see. Um, really cool. Uh, maybe not. Maybe it's just English and French, not in Spanish. So obviously geared towards the Canadian market as well, you know, North America here, which is cool. Okay, so uh, here's the system. Pretty decent size. You know, I'll compare this in a second with the actual size of an actual TurboGrafx-16 system, but pretty decent size. There's nothing, this is where the games would normally go into, but there's, there's nothing uh, for the for the games. These are slightly smaller than a who car, they call them who cards, the, the games themselves. It'd be really cool if they actually added an attachment where you can actually purchase additional games and, and play them like a cartridge. This thing would also normally come off and it doesn't. It's just built on there. Uh, you have the logo on the back. Um, let's see, maybe it does come off. Yeah, I'm assuming it does. I stand corrected, it does come off. So this is normally where the CD attachment would go on to the back here. Uh, this is where the HDMI, so I do stand correct, this is HDMI cable in the back. And it looks like you can barely see it right here. That's where the, the power uh, would go into, okay? The on and off switch, this is where the on and off switch here. So it's just like the old school would have that. And these are where the two controller ports would plug into, okay? Standard size controller, kind of feels just like the original. Very similar to the classic NES controller, you have these turbo buttons here that change kind of speed and all that, these buttons. You have the run and select, they didn't do a start, but the run's basically the start button. And a really long cable. You know, Nintendo made the mistake when they came out with the Nintendo NES Mini, really short cable. This thing, I mean, it's got plenty of feet. I mean, I'd say it's probably close to 10 feet long for the cable, which is nice. Here is your, your this is for the power, right? It doesn't come with, it looks like it doesn't come with, let's see, just wanna confirm. And no, that's not the case. So it doesn't come with an actual uh, brick to plug in, a, a USB adapter for the outlet, right? Um, so I guess they assume you have that if you have 
uh, a smartphone, uh, so it doesn't come with that. So that just comes with a USB. You cannot plug this into the wall, obviously. So it's a little disappointing. It looks like they're cutting costs. And an HDMI cable. All the games are, are built in there. So uh, let's compare this to an actual size of a TurboGrafx-16 system now. Here is a closer look at the original TurboGrafx-16 uh, console. You can see it's got the adapter here for the, the CD player I was talking about before. This thing flips on just like that, so very cool. This one's modded, so it has AV out. Most of them don't have AV out, or uh, was, you know, which is red, uh, white, yellow. Uh, here's where kind of you would plug into the RF on the side there, and um, this is where you. This is also modded where I can play in, in Japanese or American. Uh, and I do recommend recommend eventually getting one of these, an EverDrive. This is a Turbo EverDrive. It can put games on there and load them on. Really cool unit to have. So you can put all these games on there. And it only has one controller port opposed to two, like this one has. But it's fairly lightweight, but you can kind of see the size comparison. I'd say it's about, I don't know, maybe two thirds the size of the original one. So they could have made it smaller, but you know, it's got a good build to it. It's really light. The, this one definitely is much, much heavier. This is really light. This is probably just got like a Raspberry Ford single board into it. It's, it's all emulator. And on the bottom here, it's got the Konami logo, which obviously the original one did not have. It was uh, NEC. So. Without any further ado, let's plug this in and check out some gameplay. Thanks. Okay, so here's the menu. Uh, it starts you off at the Turbo Graphic 16 screen. And here are the games. So you have the kind of the top middle there, you have a list of all of them. And in the middle here, you have the case, jewel case, cool. Uh, Parasol Stars is basically Bubble Bubble 3. We can start off with that one. Actually, first, I want to show you. You can sort of by alphabetical game format, release date. I think alphabetical is probably the easiest thing to kind of scroll through the games. With it's not set to alphabetical automatically, so just be aware of that. You also have uh, game settings. You have your user manuals. You can scan that QR code, and it'll pop up to your smartphone or whatever. You need different languages, all the main ones, of course. Display settings. Um, these are just changed to different aspect ratios of the screens. Uh, you also can hit run, and it'll add a filter to it. Uh, yeah, I mean it says right there in the bottom run CRT filter, but it took me a while to figure it out. Um, so let's go ahead and play with this one right here. This one's kind of stretched. I don't prefer that. So we turn to main menu. Uh, you got different wallpapers. This is the default one that's on. I'll leave it there. Uh, menu design. You can change a different thing. I think it's automatically preset to PC Engine. You got Core FX. There's 17 different uh, variations of the PC Engine TurboGrafx 16 systems out there. They're they're unique. So there's just quite a few different variations. You know. Uh, restore factory setup you want to do that too um so let's check out parasol stars pretty cool graphic there putting the hue card in there tato working design support of this this is based on i think there was an arcade port of this if you like bubble bobbles this is a game definitely check out You can kind of see where the bubble bubble element comes into play a little bit, right? So I got my umbrella here. Turn everything into fruit. Gotta eat your fruit and vegetables. I don't know if that is like luggage or something. Interesting. Here we go. So it plays kind of like, um, kind of like Bubble Bobble-ish, right? Oh, okay. Starting slot to get back. I can uh, save, so I can save it into slot, yes. You got four save slots for every every game. You can also load it. Re uh, return to menu. Overall, good selection of games. Uh, R-Type, Swan One, Space Harrier, Spire House is of course classic. This, on the box, it has M for Mature. I'm assuming this is why this game right here. It's it's a Namco game, but I don't know. It's it's Green Blood. Looks like Jason Voorhees, right? Looks like Jason from uh, Friday the Thirteenth. But yeah, all the blood's green. Now in the Japanese port, the PC Engine port, the it's red. So I think they tamed it down with the North American release. Oh, watch out! That vomit. It's a fun, it's a fun game. Okay. 
wrong button. So uh, two is to advance. One, uh, one is to advance. Two is to go back. So hit one to confirm. I'll go to settings. I'm going to add play. We'll do filter. Just kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. Victory Run is a racing game. Ease. I like Arizona. It's a lot of fun. This game also came out for the TurboGrafx CD, the duo, right? But um, that one kind of has some lag. This one doesn't lag as much. It's part of the Bonk stories. You see the filter? Kind of depends on if you like the filter or not. I don't mind the filter too much. It looks like it's playing on the CRT screen. You scroll down. You know, f I believe 482 games can, uh, I'm sorry, 482 colors can be displayed on once on a turbo graphics system around, around that anyway. And it's, uh, you know, for a late 80s console, considering, you know, the competition at the time was primarily initially the NES and Sega Genesis in North America, uh, it, it compares fairly well. It just didn't have a huge market share in, in North America, unfortunately, because uh, Nintendo and Genesis just dominated uh, the console market. Here's different points and stuff, so you had different upgrades. Fun shooter, though. Okay. I'll show you another filter. This is my favorite filter I'll show you here. The Turbo Express. I have an Express, and my Express, the audio doesn't work very well. I need to cap it, recap it, and get it fixed, but it's a pretty common issue. Uh, but they're very cool. I remember growing up, a friend having one, I think it was so cool to play games on the go. Uh, very different than the Genesis even, because you could play it such well advanced. But the game's batteries would just burn through it. Um, these are kind of RPG games. But there's no, like, pictures or anything to show you, any display or anything like that. Kadash, this is a fun one. See, how cool is this? Even the screen looks like it would look like on a Turbo Express. Pretty sweet. Another working design game. a cool filter. Got Priest, Ninja, we have Fighter. Can't even spell my own name. <laughs> there you go. Good. I only have four spots for my name anyway, so it's perfect. Okay. It's a fun adventure game. Five continents. I forget if this, I think this was an arcade game back in the day. Dude, that took away like two thirds of my health right there. Get some type of currency. Fun adventure game, though. I think overall the game selection so far. Um, I'll save it so I can get back to it later. Let's also check out, if you go over here, uh, it's like console, so you have PC Engine. And there's more games here. Um, and I just want to mention some of the games, You just unless you speak Japanese, you're not going to be able to play, right? So, for example, for example, Snatcher, it's all in Japanese. So unless you speak Japanese, you're not going to be able to play it because you need need to read it be able to play it. Uh, in games like Gradius, of course, you can do it. Um, you know, Dracula, this is uh, Run of Blood, you can, of course, play it. Uh, Ease Book. Uh, they also have this on uh, the TurboGrafx-16, and that's in English. This version is in Japanese, so you won't be able to play it. But let's go check out uh, uh, Run Out Blood. 
And this is cool, it loads a CD. Actually, I want to get rid of the filter here because uh, you wouldn't be able to play this on the Turbo Graphics or Turbo Express or the um, GT. So let's go back to Return to Min Menu. Let me go back. Well, it's pretty nice. Now, these are all emulators, right? Um, so you can save it anytime by, by exiting like that and load it, which is cool because that's a benefit of emulator, I guess. Uh, let's go to display setting. Let's do that. I'm going to take our uh, filter. I don't know. Uh, let's do this one. Okay. It's cool. It kind of shows it loading a CD. That's pretty unique. The other minis don't do that. I think that's one thing that the Genesis Mini really dropped the ball on was not including any Sega CD games at the time, um, which is unfortunate. They could have done Sonic CD and some other good quality Sega CD games, but they didn't. Maybe when they do a version 2. <laughs> it's in German uh, and Japanese text, so I don't quite understand what they're saying. <laughs> And this is a pretty lengthy uh, intro here. I just want to show you. It definitely loads much faster than what the CD would do. I think the fact that it's in German sounds pretty cool, though. got the CD quality. I'm going to skip it because it's a pretty long intro, but uh, it's got the CD quality audio because it's on the CD, which is cool. So we'll return to menu. Another game I want to show you on here, which was never released on PC Engine. It's a super graphics system that came out. This one right here. Demakamaru. It's basically Ghosts and Ghosts. Um, and it's a super graphics. And uh, it's it's a little bit more enhanced than the, the PC Engine. And this is probably the best arcade port of this game you'll, you'll find. You'll recognize it. You can see the colors. It's, it looks really good. And this game is really hard to find. The P Super Graphics is a hard system to come by. The fact that this is in the set, is, I think it's a really cool added benefit. So you can kind of get some some pretty rare, hard to find games. This game is just crazy hard. Let's see, classic Capcom though. The music's good, great. I love this attention detail. Alright. Ugh. But yeah, the attention detail is just crazy good in this game. Great port. Although I'm, I'm terrible at this game. Alright. <laughs> but yeah, that's like a really cool, uh, nice game to include in this collection. Uh, here's Bonx 1. So Bonx Revenge is on the other one. Bonx 3 is not included in the set. Interesting. Uh, Secret of Greatest, if you hold select, you can actually uh, unlock the arcade uh, music, arcade port of it. Galaga 88 is a fun game. So you can see a nice mix. Let's check out this game. Another Namco. A lot more games came out for the PC Engine than uh, for the Turbo Graphics. Oh, this is, you can tell this is kind of an earlier game that came out for the system, because graphically it's... So the candles up top are my health, I guess, soon? I got an upgrade. Interesting. Spider webs. Oh. That's interesting. Oh, 
I'll show you what I mean with uh, Gradius. Where is it at? So this must be an order of game format. Let's do it, okay. Yeah, I think alphabetical is the best way to go. So this is a normal one. Let me exit and I'll show you. Now I'm going to hold select. Oh, that didn't do it. So it looks different. Yeah, it sounds a little bit different. Fun shooter though, for sure. Good one to include. All right, now I'm gonna share. Okay, now I'm going to share with you my, my final thoughts on the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. So overall, what do I think about the TurboGrafx-16 Mini? Overall, I like it. Uh, it is it does retail for $100, US which is kind of expensive for, for a Mini compared to the other ones out there. However, uh, you get 25 US TurboGrafx-16 games built in. You also get uh, 32 of the Japanese PC Engine games. A nice mix, although granted, some of those PC Engine games, as I mentioned before, Unless you speak Japanese, you're not gonna be able to play them, unfortunately, because you, you need to be able to read the dialogue in order to continue. Uh, but overall, it, I like the package. I think Konami did a really good job. The controller is by Hori, and uh, they did a really job, good job making the controller feel like the original controller. So no, no gripes there. Uh, I guess things I wish that were improved. I wish that, just like with every Mini outside of the Commodore 64, I wish you had an ability to add games to it. The Commodore 64 Mini, you can do that. I wish you had an opportunity to play online with other people. I think that'd be cool to have achievements and things like that make it more modernized in that sense where you can play against other people uh, but overall do i recommend getting the turbo graphics 16 mini i do uh, it definitely will open uh, your eyes to other games out there besides that are not nintendo and genesis uh, there's some really good games and i think overall they chose a really good job selecting some of the games including the bonx games and space harrier and, and uh, adventure island uh, and uh, spider house which is classic a lot of these games added up are going to be pretty expensive if you were buying them separately uh, and I think this will interest people into the system potentially, which will probably end up cause the system games themselves to, to spike up and the system costs itself to spike up too, unfortunately, at least in the short term. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I uh, appreciate you guys leaving comments for liking this video. We'll see you guys soon. Take care and game on.